Hi there everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're working on uh, something that's kind of a problem that uh, creeps up all over the place and a lot of people kind of get around it uh, by painting over them and that issue is clear canopies. Now um, I know it's particularly difficult to um, you know to kind of set these up they tend to be fogged or whatever so a lot of people just like literally build it, prime right over it, screw it, I'm not doing the guys inside. And I can understand saving on that work for sure. Um, now you'll see here that I've got one of them already kind of glued together. I guess uh, Bob up front here gets all the bugs in the face. Uh, but what I'm going to go over is uh, basically kind of start to finish how I do uh, these canopies. Now obviously if you've got a Storm Raven or if you've got a Valkyrie here or you've got uh, any of the jets, anything like that, and you've got uh, all, all the Eldar tanks, things like that, um, and you want to uh, have something that where you can actually see through the canopy and you don't lose the detail of the work that's inside, uh, I'm going to show you how I do canopies. All right, so first things first, um, let's look at gluing them together, uh, and then you let them sit for a little while. Now, um, I try not to use any super glue or any of the thicker uh, plastic glues, uh, just because, well, to be honest, it kind of gloops all over the place. You want something that's really, really thin, um, so you don't get a lot of, uh, you know, kind of bleeding out of extra uh, glue. So what I tend to use is a plastic kind of weld, uh, any kind of brush on, uh, plastic cement, things like that. Um, this is an older bottle, but they actually come in like an orange bottle now. I love uh, the, the plastic weld um, uh, by Plastrect, so it's really, really quite good. Anyway, um, how, what I'm going to do is make sure that whenever you do this, you trim everything really well so that it, it fits, um, and then of course you make sure that you dry fit to see exactly how uh, it's going to fit on there. Uh, with the Valkyrie cockpit, there's a little bit of a lip or an edge in there, and um, yeah, so we'll use that. So using our fingernails, or our fingertips, if you have little fingers, uh, I'm going to go around and very sparingly uh, just touch a little bit of glue around that edge. Okay, and I won't do the little one because I don't want fingerprints all over the place. And then I'll grab my uh, canopy here. I'll hook the one corner and I'll just lay it down. And you want to avoid uh, moving around a whole lot here. You just want to get it on and don't fidget with it too much. You want to leave that canopy fairly clear. So I'm just touching that glue around the outside. I do not want much in the way of surplus at all. Okay, so I'll just hook that one corner so I know it'll fit. Take a good look and just take a second and lay it down. Again, hopefully you don't have too much, uh, too much extra glue kind of kicking around. If you have glue on your fingers, be very careful while you're touching on that canopy because you'll just cloud it up. Okay, perfect. So what I'll do is I'll let that sit. Uh, this one's already done, uh, but I'll let that sit for actually about, I don't know, a good, a good half an hour, 45 minutes, maybe even overnight, maybe longer, probably not. I'll, I'll let it sit for about uh, an hour just to be sure. Okay, so um, I've let the glue sit on these guys here and uh, you'll see that there isn't much kind of marking on the actual panels. There's a little bit here, but any of those little bits of scuffs we're actually going to solve a little bit later on. Now you'll notice here that I uh, I got all excited about this. I started dry fitting the uh, the, the cockpit uh, canopies on, and I actually lost a bit. It's this tiny little uh, itsy bitsy bit that's here, um, teeny weeny itsy bitsy little bit, I guess. Um, and uh, I had to <laughs> spend uh, a little bit of time on Netflix and just kind of ground out another one. So you're going to see this uh, as we go along. Um, but anyways, the uh, the canopies definitely made it onto the Valkyrie. And uh, they definitely uh, got driven around, flown around a little bit. I'm going to be completely honest because, you know, we're all children. It's a fantastic. Um, now, the next challenge is going to be to prime these. Now, I'm not going to use a spray primer, obviously. That will uh, that will muck up our canopies. We won't be able to see through, and then they'll crash the plane. Oh, it'll be sad. Um, so what I'm going to do now is use Imperial Primer, but I'm going to use the brush on. And uh, it's pretty simple. I'm just going to brush this on to uh, anything that I want to uh, eventually paint. Now... The trick with this is to go nice and light. I find it gets, you know, a little thick on you as you kind of go. But just go nice and light, uh, lots of thin coats as you're putting it through. Now, if this was an Elder, uh, Elder, Eldar canopy, right? Or Eldari, I guess now. Um, but what you would do is you would just put a little bit on 
the just because you just have the plastic if it was Eldar. Um, but I'm just going to put a little bit on, and I'm going to make sure that I get into even the little side bits here. Okay, and you'll see that it doesn't really stick all that well to the to the clear plastic. But that's okay, just be patient. Um, you, you know, you kind of start on that. And then as I cook around here, on the plastic it should fit, uh, it should fit, it should work a little bit better here. So I'll just do a nice light coat of that. And as it dries, it will bond to the plastic. And even if it doesn't bond initially, then on our second coat, we can come back and cover it up as well. So uh, I'm just going to go once over all of these different pieces, the gray and the clear plastic, and then I'll let the primer uh, settle down or just sit a little bit. Once it's dry, I'll go over with another coat. And as we build up the primer, and I'm only thinking about two coats here, but as we build up the primer, um, it'll stick a lot more as we as we go. Okay, so you can see now that we've got the primer on, and uh, like it's not always a perfect thing. It obviously picks up dust, and as it uh, the primer kind of shrinks, it, it leaves little. Uh, bits and pieces behind uh, but it's uh, not too pretty right now but what we're going to do next is basically just paint uh, your um, paint your canopy the exact same way that you would paint it if as if it was a you know a, a prime piece of well it is a prime piece of plastic i guess um, we're going to paint the canopy the exact same as we would uh, for the rest of our vehicle so i'm just going to use my uh, base color here and then I'll come back and wash it, and then we'll do the highlights on it as well. All right, so I've got the canopies all painted up here, uh, the same way that I painted up for the rest of my vehicle there. And uh, I, there's a little bit of a harsh line in between the paint itself and the actual canopy. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to kind of transition that wash, just to um, transition that 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 gradation that color transition the colors between the two a little bit better with a wash now whether you're using Nuln or Agrax or whatever you're doing uh, then you can you know just use the same wash here uh, for me I've got a custom mix that I use and um, I use 25% uh, Nuln oil 25% Agrax Earthshade and 50% floor wax and I love the fact it's like a you know, regular floor wax you can get anywhere and we're going to use that again in a second um, but I love this because it's got lots of flow to it. So what I'm going to do is just pin wash or just place that wash right in here like that. And it's kind of tough to see, but if I hold it up against my palette, you'll see that there's a little bit of a line in there. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to go around all the way around the bottom and then I'll let that sit. So I'm just putting just a little bit of wash in there just to gradiate that over all right so uh when i'm done with this i'll let it dry and then i'll flip it upside down and i'll go on the inside so it's going to take just a little bit of time but i'm just going to go in here now and just work my way through so that i've got that nice that kind of dividing defining line there all right, so we've got it all, you know, essentially black lined or kind of pin washed in there. And it does provide that really nice transition between the clear and then, of course, the paint. And you can get a little bit of a smoky kind of fill on that, uh, on those inner recesses there, which is, which is really, really nice. It adds lots of character, but it doesn't take away from the model. And it's not as jarring to see that, that separation of, of color. Um, now... The next task would be to uh, varnish it. So when you finished your model, um, you give it a spray. A lot of people use like Purity Seal. I use Purity Seal. Uh, if you can find it, Art Coat's kicking around, but it's you know really glossy. There's a whole bunch of other ones. Army Painter puts some out as well. Um, but anytime you put a spray varnish on top of our on top of our canopies here, we run into problems where it just fogs completely uh, all that clear clear plastic. And I find that that just you know completely ruins it uh, if you've painted the inside and you want you know everybody to see it if it's fogged obviously it won't work so um, we're going through all this trouble just so that we can see through these canopies um, so there's another way to kind of do a hard coat on this and that is to be using uh, floor wax now I use this in my wash all the time this is really big now this bottle has lasted me forever and ever and I think now it's under pledge uh, but any cheapy like dirt cheap as long as it's clear uh, floor wax will do so what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to take some and I'm going to pour it into this, it's just a little container here, uh, it's a kid's fruit container, and what I want is I want to be able to immerse completely these in. Now all we're going to do is just the fastest uh, little dip into our uh, floor wax here. So I'll just grab my end with my uh, tweezers here and I'll just do a quick uh, dunk in and then when I pull it out give it a good shake. Now you'll see that it doesn't haze anything in there but you get lots of buildup in those um, in those spaces. So what I'm going to do is take my uh, a bit of paper towel okay and then what you can do is you can use the tip of the paper towel and you can go in and soak up get it in here you can soak up all these little bits in the corner let's try it with this frayed piece here there we go and you'll see that our end result might need to collect a little bit more but our end result looks pretty sharp uh, it doesn't dissolve any of the paint or anything like that and what I'm really liking about this is that it's protected but look how clear it remains that's it's like a perfect window there it actually even removes a couple of the scuffs that you'll get in there as well so uh, let me continue on with this now once I've got all that pooling out of the way uh, and I'm going to let it sit now I'll let it sit for about half an hour and we'll come back and take another look all right, so now that that bath of floor wax has uh, dried, uh, you can see that we've got a nice durable coat on here. We've got lots of contrast and they really pop. It looks really, really nice. But most importantly, uh, they are clear. The finish is clear on there. Even if we had some scuffs and all that on, on the uh, clear plastic itself, um, we don't anymore. It'll polish it all up, which is fantastic. I mean, it's meant to do that on floors anyways. Uh, I also like the fact that it kind of hardens it hardens up the plastic as well, which is a nice touch. That's really, really cool. And of course, my favorite part of it, of course, is that it keeps it you know, transparent while still protecting it. Now, before you apply it to the rest of your model, make sure that you varnish your whole other model first once you got it finished. Now, it wouldn't make sense to have the, you know, go through all this trouble and then just fog them up with like a purity seal anyway. But I would varnish everything first and then um, use just a little bit of that plastic weld and just do just a little tiny bit around the edges and then you can park it on. So I'll put these on here. Uh, you can see I've got the, the, the cockpit details all kind of finished in there. And uh, I've got my missing bit here that I've, uh, where I lost it. I still don't know where that bit is. It's crazy. Uh, but... Uh -huh. Fiddle fiddle. All right, there we go. But you can see with them mounted on, if we did a little bit of that plastic weld in there, uh, it wouldn't fog it up. If we used a big blob of, say, super glue or the, the plastic glue, again, it might fog it up as well. So use just a little tiny bit of weld to affix that on, and you are golden. So varnish the model, use a bit of the plastic weld to put it on, and oh man, it looks great. Uh, you can also see right into the cockpit, it's very clear and it's uh, it's fantastic. I actually, when I figured this out, it, uh, it changed the way that I did uh, canopies on planes and vehicles and stuff. So, uh, well, that's it guys. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, for watching. I hope it was of value to you. Uh, this was such so valuable when I first figured it out. And um, yeah, if you like the video, obviously hit that like button. Uh, if you want more content just like this one, uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And if you want notifications of all of our future videos on your devices, make sure you grab that little bell beside the, the, the button there as well. So thanks a lot for swinging by, guys, and we'll catch you in the next video.